All right, guys, we're on Deuteronomy 8. It's not that long. It's about um, one page. Deuteronomy 8. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments. <clears throat> so the fact that it took 40 years is a test. So was that, was that a test? P people say, oh, like I, I've been to church 40 years. A test? I've heard preachers say, well, the disobedience of them made a one-year journey take 40 years. Like the disobedience, the lack of faith. But right here, God's saying, that God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Like, correct his son? The sun just shined again. And God's probably telling me, you know, James, you need to change your life. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God to to walk in his ways and to fear him. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, and a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. I don't know if this translation, I don't know if I trust this translation, because like, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass, like the best metals we have are like iron and brass, and you know, um, just depends what you're building, but the most solid of these, and I mean, did they have that back then? Is this translation, has it adjusted to make it modern to our society today. You know what I'm talking about? When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein and when thy herds and flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So, we just, so this is um, a common theme right here, that once you start living prosperous, you're going you're gonna to forget me. You're going to forget what God did for you. We led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions, and drought like no water, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, out of the rock of flint isn't it crazy flint michigan how they had that big they're like known for their water issue the pollution of their water that's kind of biblical if you think about it and going going back to that uh, 40 years in the wilderness i'm sure disobedience and them like not believing and being scared and moving slow and you know i'm sure all that did make it it did prolong their journey but also kind of shows that it wasn't just their disobedience that God was trying to humble them. God, like he wanted, he was looking to see who was really loyal and who wasn't, which that also kind of seems like God's not all knowing, right? Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do good at thy later end. And thou say in the, thy heart, my power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. So God saying he did this to prove that like it wasn't you that did it. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Again, that sounds like a contemporary um, translation. That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. And it shall be if thou do all 
If thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face. So shall ye perish because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Anyway, uh, peace. Deuteronomy 8.